Welcome to another connection here on TKOA Television. Dennis King, thanks for joining us on the show this week. We try to have a show every Monday called Connection, connecting you and with the organizations and the people around our viewing area. We have some great organizations. We have a lot of people that volunteer a lot of their time, and obviously they're always needing additional help. We're going to talk with the two different organizations today, uh, and we hope that we bring some information to you that perhaps you don't know about. If you ever have any questions, you can always contact these organizations. Stay with us. Be back in a moment on Connection. North Arkansas College cares. Did you know they have a food pantry for students, tutoring services, financial and career coaching, and a career clothing closet? And North Arks tuition is one of the lowest in the state. Enroll this fall and get the support you need. Exciting faculty, small classes, and affordable tuition are all examples that show students North Ark cares. Open enrollment now through August 12th. Classes begin August 15th. See the full class schedule at northark.edu or speak with an advisor, 870-391-3505. Sam Alexander Pharmacy has expanded and is now offering many additional products and services. Their new pharmaceutical compounding area allows them to create products to fit the unique needs of a customer. They also have added Spinco orthotic shoes and sandals, Dr. Comfort diabetic shoes, baby gifts by Aiden and Anias, and toys by Melissa and Doug. Stop in today and let them help you with any of your specialty pharmaceutical needs. Sam Alexander Pharmacy, your local Health Mart pharmacy in Harrison. Back on Connection here on TKO8 Television, our first guest in the studio today. Uh, no stranger to the area, Jerry Jackson with us, and also Angie Ward. And they're both with Hospice of the Hills in Hospice House. So we appreciate both of you coming in. First time I've met Angie. Of course, Jerry, mm -hmm. been around Jerry for a long, long time. Uh, Jerry uh, involved in Hospice house from the beginning and angie is a registered nurse there so let's kick it off a little bit jerry i'll let you kick uh, kick off the uh, conversation here hospice maybe just briefly what is hospice for people that may not know most people do but a lot of people may not well i'll even let angie okay. answer that i know hospice care is um end of life care palliative care when someone decides um dennis that they've decided not to take any more treatments that they've decided that they are done with their fight and that they just want to have quality of life the best that they can from this point forward. Right. That's where we step in. Um, we very much um, can take someone with a, a terminal illness, um, then that comes from their doctor. They would go see their doctor and they would be um, referred to us from their physician's office and we can take them up to six months out. Um, and a lot of people feel like that they have to um, have some kind of closure in that six months that's not necessarily the case it's just if that terminal illness if that's the normal for it to um to go through that six months that's fine longer we can renew yeah. um, but the earlier we can get someone to hospice the better off it is for the families and the patients you know most people out there in the viewing audience either you've been touched with some terminal illness in your family with friends or whomever um, and I've known several people in, in my lifetime and, and several uh, actually since I moved back to Harrison uh, that have utilized hospice and it's such a wonderful organization. It takes special people uh, to do that and I always admire people like yourself, Angie, and that, that work in the, in the hospice situation because, you know, you, it, it's, it, a lot of people think of gloom and doom. But, you know, you really, you're really you trying to make uh, the family and the patient as comfortable as possible uh, through the end of life. We're all going to be there at some point in time. It just depends on uh, where we get there with. But it, it's a very good organization. Thank and, you. and there's a lot of different ones. Uh, Jerry Jackson uh, got the hospice house here in Harrison going. Maybe talk a little bit about when you started it, Jerry, and kind of the idea of it. And, and you've been the spearhead of this whole mm -hmm. thing. So. I, I know you've heard this story before, but we started, uh, we broke ground in early 2005, 
And at that time, Catherine Nance, of all people, she came in my office and pounded on my desk and says, we need a hospice house. And me being in real estate, she thought I could help. And uh, she was, we thought we could go get an old house and fix it up. But we learned quick that the uh, medical field and regulations wouldn't allow us to do that. So we had to break ground, and we were going to build a little house. And we thought we could do this for around $70,000. And then we learned a little more that we had to build us a little hospital and it was going to cost nearly a half a million dollars. Well, by that time, we were in to the project. We have notified the community we were going to do it, and we had broken ground on some land the county gave us. So we, we struggled for about a year and a half raising money, but we raised money, materials, labor. It was really one of the coolest things, Dennis. I know you were around when that was taking place, and everybody pitched together, and we built us a hospice house, and we opened it in uh, September of 2007. And I know you're going to lead into 20 is plenty, so I want I wanted to share this with Angie because she may have never heard this story of why 20 is plenty and how it came about. Uh, we opened the house. We made a deal. With, we partner with uh, NARMC. They supply the medical help, and we do things. We pretty much function as a foundation. We build the house. We try to raise funds, and we raise funds to pay for the patients uh, that can't pay for themselves and don't have private insurance or Medicare. That amounts to maybe 5% of the patients over the 10-year period. And um, we opened the house in 2007, and we made a commitment to NARMC. If, if you supply the medical care, and we know that it's, uh, it's a losing proposition. It's not a moneymaker. You do it for the community. Uh, we told them that we would do everything we could. We put a team of about 10 people together on this board. We would do everything we could to subsidize the people that couldn't pay for themselves. We would try to take care of this. Well, the first 30 days, we had a patient. I don't think you've heard this story. Mm -hmm. We had a patient uh, in the hospice house that needed special medication that was not approved by Medicare. So boom, the cost was going to fall back onto us. Two days supply was $24,000. We were flat broke. We just opened the doors and we put everything we could into that. So we said, we've got to come up with something. We've got to come up with a fundraising opportunity, and boom, here comes 20 is plenty. Unbelievable. Wow. So uh, People wouldn't, re- wouldn't think about that. But there, I know there are medications that are, the cost is phenomenal, but without it, the patient obviously is not going to live a comfortable life, whatever that lifespan may be. But that's a fantastic yeah. story. I've heard that yeah, story. That's myself. how 20 is plenty originally. So and now, I've got some other questions here, but while we're on that, the 20 is plenty campaign, do you have a period of time that you like to run it, or is it all the time? Or No, we run it every fall, okay. and that's a good thing about hospice. We don't have various campaigns. The people that are on the board, they do a lot of other things rather than trying to raise money 12 months out of the year, but one 30-day period out of the year, and it's usually the fall, it's September and October. Somewhere in that period of time, we run uh, the 20 is plenty campaign right. the rest of the year. People do contribute, but we're not out campaigning during that okay, time. Okay, very good. Uh, obviously, no cost to patients. Some people, and maybe you touched on this, Angie, was that uh, if somebody goes into hospice and, you know, they're expect, expected life, uh, life expectancy, excuse me, it would be three months or six months, whatever, well, they may do better than, mm-hmm. you know, there's no guarantees on anything. Well, they so do. if somebody wants mm-hmm. to leave, they can leave. Is that correct? And come, if they have to come back, they come back. They can, <clears throat> absolutely. Our, our real goal right now um, educationally is to let people know that the earlier they get on hospice, the better. Okay. Um, one of the reasons for that is because if you're still out living your life pretty much to the fullest, we can keep you out of pain, keep your breathing under control, all of the symptom management. We can have a nurse come in every week, every other week, but we're also there monitoring your Mm -hmm. loved one. And if you start to have changes and you need pain medicine changes, we can get a hold of your doctor, assess you, we're there 
keeping an eye on things. We're also there to say, hey, maybe it's time for a walker. Oh, okay. Maybe it's time for a hospital That's bed. Good. And we can facilitate those things within a 24 hour period. We can get you a hospital bed usually by the afternoon. Fantastic. And and that's a real struggle that patients that aren't ho on hospice go through trying to get those things for their uh, for their patient. And you um, were very kind to give a compliment earlier, but I can, Jerry can probably attest to this as well. We're so lucky to have such a great board that does fundraising. But you go in to hospice, I think, because maybe you're called to it or for whatever mm -hmm, reason, mm -hmm. but you think that you're going to be a blessing to others and you end up very much being blessed by yeah, these people. I can, I their stories, understand. their courage, their families, and, yeah. and it's a, it's a blessing understand. to work in. I can certainly understand that. Uh, we've got about four minutes just so we go by so fast when we get to talking about something like this, which mm -hmm. really not only intrigues me, but, but also we all know at some point in time we're going to be involved in it some way or somehow. Um, but uh, Jerry, the campaign, the 20 is plenty campaign, it, but other than that, if somebody wanted to help out mm -hmm. other than mm -hmm. cash donations, mm -hmm. what's some of the other ways that maybe? Do you still do room uh, naming? Over we, we do, and that's a cash donation, but we've got a couple of rooms still available out okay. of all the rooms that uh, we name in a, a loved one in memory of or in honor of a right. person or an organization. And Dennis, I'm glad you uh, hit on that because what we're trying to do this year in the 20 is plenty campaign is retire a debt. Mm -hmm. We have a facility out there now that has cost 1.5 million. We owe $29,000. Wow. And uh, we, we really didn't want to borrow anything, but we had to. Right. But 29 out of 1.5 million isn't much, but we want to retire that during the 20 is plenty campaign. So okay. if anybody would like to help out with that in naming a room, we've got, like I said, some rooms left that okay. we can name, and that would substantially uh, help out. Uh, other than that, I mean, I'd say probably other than funding, uh, the other thing that they obviously always need is volunteers. And you could always use volunteers. Maybe Angie speak to that. It, it, and see, a lot of people probably didn't realize that until Jerry, till you brought this up, that uh, Angie actually works for the hospital. Thank she you. does. And, and that's a mm -hmm. lot of people don't know that out there. But to I me, mean, these professionals, again, the partnership with NARMC is so good, so strong, and it's great for our community. Because right. NARMC is a community hospital. So, mm -hmm. but it volunteers for other things other than the professional side of it. I'm sure you always need. Volunteers. Absolutely, we always, and we're um, in the process of really revamping our volunteer our volunteer program, doing some new training. Hospice has its, you know, its own set of uh, thought processes and how we approach families and in, in, in the patient's care. But we very much are recruiting right now for hospice volunteers. We would love to have anybody who's interested give us a call at the at the hospice house and you give us a name, come in, sit down and talk with me. I would love to speak with them about hospice volunteering. Um, it's just a wonderful, wonderful opportunity right now to get in on um, some really some new things we're doing along those lines. You know, so sometimes people out there, you may only have a few hours a week or maybe right. you're retired and you'd like to help out in different things. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you just got a few hours, I'm sure they would be more than happy to find something for you to help out that's a positive thing for Hospice House. Absolutely. So that's good. Anything else? We got about a minute or so left. Jerry, I, I wanted to touch it, and there's so many different things, but I think you kind of hit the point of first the 20 is plenty campaign which is coming up here in, in, in about a month and then be in the fall you want to obviously uh, relieve yourself of the debt uh, right. over there they've got just a slight bit left on their loan they can get that paid off big relief to them and uh, so if you're if you're out there and you'd like to help out Jerry Jackson Jerry Jackson Realty obviously you can give him a call or call mm -hmm. Angie uh, Ward over at the uh, hospice house if you have any questions or you need to meet with them I'm sure be more than happy uh, that people out there that it, you, there's a lot of great uh, organizations and reasons to donate, but you won't find any more rewarding, I promise, than That's right. Hospice That's right. House. So we, we do appreciate you. Thank you both for coming in. Uh, Jerry, I know you're very busy, and Angie, obviously, I know you're very busy. Thank I hadn't you met so. you before, and so it's, it's nice a pleasure to meet you, to meet you and uh, continue the good work. Jerry, when, when get a little closer to the 20th plenty. September 20th. Uh, okay, well, let's get you back in around the 1st of September. And let's get it back on the show again. Maybe bring somebody else with you too. Okay. Not that Angie can't come back, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but we, we want to <laughs> we want to really we want to really push the 20th plenty uh, campaign yeah. out there Thank to you. the public and, and let them know 
of the importance of it and the importance of Hospice House. Thank you both for coming in. We do appreciate right. it very much. Thanks for joining us on the first half of the show. Stay with us. Uh, a little bit on the brighter side, we're going to talk about bluegrass music, the Bluegrass Festival coming up. Stay with us. Criminal Justice is one of the fastest growing programs at North Arkansas College. If you're considering an exciting career as a fish or game warden, police officer, or crime scene investigator, check out the Criminal Justice classes offered this fall at only $68 per credit hour for Boone County residents and $92 for Arkansas residents. North Ark offers high quality instruction close to home at an affordable price. Think North Ark first, we're your college. Open enrollment now through August 12th. See the full class schedule at northark.edu or speak with an advisor, 870-391-3505. Many things have changed over the years, and so has Auto Body Repair. Even though Ozark Auto Body has been in business for over 30 years, they continue to change with the times. They believe protecting the environment is important and have done so by using environmentally friendly waterborne paint from PPG. This aligns with the technology used by original manufacturers and gives you a lifetime limited warranty. Quality PPG, waterborne paint, ASC certified personnel, plus 24-hour towing service. Ozark Auto Body in Harrison, always taking pride in excellence. Back on Connection here on TKO8 Television. Thanks for joining us today. Our second guest in the studio today is Larry Martin. We always try to get with Larry each year about this same time to talk about bluegrass music and a bluegrass festival. Larry, thanks for coming in today. We Thank appreciate you for it. Thanks for giving me a call. I, I try to remember all these things. We have so many activities. If I don't get you on the calendar, just give me a call. I'll, okay. I'll always get you in here. It's okay. always a lot of fun. 45th Annual Northwest Arkansas Bluegrass Festival. 45 years of this going on, huh? Right. We've been out at Beacon Park now for the last 11 years. Have you really? Yeah. The well, first 34 was at, at uh, the fair fairgrounds. Uh -huh. Okay. That's the fairgrounds deal. Uh, maybe a little bit of, I always like to let people know a little bit of history on the thing. How did you get this maybe started uh, in 45 years ago? Who who came up with the well, idea? Well, uh, some of the first, uh, uh, Moselle and, and Artis Yancey uh -huh. were two of the of the first ones. Ward Eskew was involved, and, and I was there, but I wasn't involved. I mean, other than just attending and uh -huh. enjoying it. But uh, about 11 years ago, Fred James was at the helm, and his health was failing him. And and uh, I had been attending it for several, several years, and uh, uh, Fred talked like there wasn't going to be another one. I didn't know it, but Arvin Adams from up at Beacon Park showed up down at that meeting, and I was there, and both of us offered to help Fred, you know, keep it going. And it wound up getting... Uh, transferred to Beacon Park, and uh, we've been there now for 11 years, Dennis. Wow. Yeah. You know, for those of you that don't know where Beacon Park is now that uh, now that we've got a new highway north, uh, Beacon Park is actually right at, uh, it, it, well, I always call it Ridgeway, the old yeah. Ridgeway School there right on the corner of the old highway there, uh, past the livestock uh, barns. And then it just sits right off the road. You can see it right, right there. Right. Uh, but they uh, actually fixed it up. It's got, you know, the full stage and changing facilities and restrooms. And, you know, I guess I guess Arvin, did they actually own that property and then fix yes. that up? Is that actually, the way? Uh, there had been a gospel music fest there for a few years. Okay. Well, actually, for several years. Uh, they would lease the old Ridgeway building, mm -hmm. and we actually had a stage at the back of that for the gospel uh, music that uh, Brother Arvin put on there. Got, uh, Lighthouse Messengers, mm -hmm. they put that uh, gospel thing on there for, they're, they're well up into the 30 years that they've done that mm -hmm. there at that location. Mm -hmm. And as it, you know, growed, they uh, built the stage and it was in, uh, well, just 11, about 11 years ago that he started putting some uh, camping facility hookups in for the campers. And now we've got like over 100 uh, uh, hookup 
facilities wow. out there for wow. campers. So you turn right there by uh, by the uh, old Ridgeway gym that there's a paved road right there, and you go in around. But it's yes. actually a pretty big area back there. I didn't realize that many hookups they had. Right. But I mean, there's quite a bit of land there. It's it's not a small place. You could, they can accommodate a lot of people. They got parking, and it's uh, it's very nice. I haven't been is. up there in a while, but it's uh, I have been there, and it's a very nice facility up there. It makes a great place to have uh, this thing. Um, just uh, kind of off the record a little bit, with all the changes uh, in today going on and everything from the technology to people's beliefs and different things and so forth, is bluegrass mu music, is it a, still a growing music? What's the young people think about bluegrass music? There there are, it's not in, in huge numbers, but there are many young people that have to, I, I'm sure you've probably have heard of the Sherman Mountain Boys, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, they were a young group, and, and uh, uh, they're still going. They're down at a, uh, a college in Texas on scholarship, music scholarship, and uh, they're still playing. Uh, I see young groups all the time coming up. Matter of fact, since you uh, brought that up, in on Saturday morning out there, the 20th of August, we're going to have a, a talent show. Uh, it's sponsored by the ABA, the Arkansas Bluegrass Association. It's just a talent show. It's just an opportunity for the uh, some youngsters, 6 to 18, something like that, to just play or sing or whatever they do, the bluegrass music instruments. Mm -hmm. Good way to, to, uh, to let people see them and see how they do. You know, many times a lot of the groups out there that make the big time uh, you know, you got to start somewhere, and uh, many times just in small uh, venues like they would have here, uh, there's the right person there that knows the right person that knows the next person, and it becomes a, a situation where they can certainly move up if they're talented enough in, That's any, for sure. in any industry. I mean, right. But, the uh, Baker family is made up of, of three uh, young people mm -hmm. I'm talking about in their teens, and their mom, and that's that makes up the Baker family. Wow! And they're just a super group. Uh, uh, Trustin Baker, the uh, older boy, is a fiddle player, and he's won several state championships wow. in Tennessee and Missouri and Texas. So, so the, the thing about it is this bluegrass festival uh, that's coming up, and, and Larry's told us about this in years gone by when we've had him come in and talk about it. I mean, some of these groups are pretty big-name groups in the bluegrass industry. Uh, you know, they go to uh, places like Dallas, Texas, and Nashville and all over. Uh, we just happen to be a small area here, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, these are not all no-name groups. These no. are, a lot of these are what you would call no. regional, they, national They are groups. certainly on the bluegrass circuit, right. and uh, some of them, you know, are like for the SP, GMA the mm -hmm. the uh, uh, bluegrass awards some of them are are candidates mm -hmm. for that sure. I don't know what awards they have won right. but and then there's such a history to it uh, like the Harmons the Harmons have been coming down and uh, performing for us several years well Mike back in he, when he was a young person uh, he his sister and his brother and his dad, they they played, and now Bull Harmon, he's he's his brother, Mike's brother. He's one of the most well-known uh, bluegrass bluegrassers that there is out wow. there now. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Uh, well, once you, let's get into a little bit uh, here. Well, let's let you kind of take off here. And this uh, it's August eighteenth, nineteenth, and twentieth. Again, that's out at Beacon Park, uh, five miles north of Harrison, at Ridgeway there. Uh, kind of lead us through maybe some of the groups and when, and then we'll talk about the cost and so forth. Okay, so Dennis, you... we, have, uh, we have the uh, Thursday night, which is all gospel night, and kicking that off for us is uh, Joe Sasser and Friends. He's been doing that now for several years. Uh, he told me uh, some time back, like out of the 45 years, how many of those years? And there were several of them. Uh, I, I won't say, but I think it's 30-something years. You know, he probably wouldn't want me to uh, <laughs> expose that much uh, history on him. But uh, anyhow, Joe will be kicking it off. And I'm, I'm real pleased that we've got the Punches family uh, with us this year. Uh, they'll be uh, performing that night as, along with the Baker family. Uh, Unashamed will be there. And Bob Hammonds from up in uh, the uh, southern Missouri, uh, he and his 
uh, group will be there, and they're just a really good group. Uh, Bob was he and and uh, the mandolin player were formerly with the Green Valley Grass, and now they call themselves Wildwood. Bob Hammonds and Wildwood, and they ju- they just they do a great job on good old gospel songs. Plus, uh, Bob has written several good songs himself. Okay. That pretty well takes care of Thursday night. Uh, the uh, Friday night, I think the highlight for Friday night, even though we got some other good groups there, but I was able to get Gold Wing Express to come down. And they are on the circuit, and they are performer, entertainers, performers. Uh, they uh, have Indian ethnic, and they are uh, put on full headdress and come out, and, and they're just uh, great musicians, great bluegrassers, along with great entertainers. And they just really They'll do a great job. One, yeah. Okay. And uh, then the Harmons and uh, uh, Punchy's family and Baker family will be there then okay. on Friday night. Now on Saturday and Saturday night we have a, uh, a Saturday afternoon matinee and the, and the Saturday evening. Okay. And that will pretty much be a repeat as far as the lineup. Right. But joining the Baker family and the Punchy's family and the Harmons. That night will be a, a group with some local flavor in it, uh, Big Mill. Uh, Bill Gage plays the fiddle for them. Randy O'Dell plays the banjo. And uh, uh, Lynn Baker from over around Yelville plays the bass. And then a couple of uh, young men from up in uh, Missouri, they round out the group Big Mill, and they do a great job. A group that's not been on the stage yet for us, other than uh, I think they came down to open mic last Saturday last year on Saturday morning, they uh, Highway 36. But I've known uh, some of these guys for a long time, and they are just really good musicians and do a good job on bluegrass music. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like you got a great lineup. We've got about two or three minutes left. Let's talk about the admission. Tell us okay. the Okay. Uh, the, the bargain of the year, I promise you, is all three uh, days for $25. But if you want to break it up, why, you can come Thursday night for $10, Friday night for $10, or you can get both shows for $12 on Saturday. Okay. Now, these programs start at 6.30 in the evening, with the exception of Saturday, and 1.30 is when they start Saturday afternoon. And, uh, of course, we have a supper break there from like 5.15 to 6.30, right. and we kick it back off again. Do, do you, speaking of that, do you have... Any vendor meal, uh, I mean, uh, food vendors set up, or do people bring their own stuff? No, Arvin has a great uh, concession stand. Okay. Right there. Okay, I mean, it's it's right there at the back side of the seating area. Okay. And it's he's always got a good menu, Very and good. Uh, uh, it's good food. You know, and he practiced for, for the May gospel songs, gospel show, and the June gospel show. Uh, singing that they have up there. He gets to practice twice before he, <laughs> before he feeds us. It. Yeah. Surely he's got it down pat by He's then. got it fixed by then. <laughs> Do we cover everything pretty well? Pretty Larry, much. I, I would mention one thing. Okay. The uh, hookups, I think now, are well, I think the 50-amp hookups are all gone. Okay. But they are $15 a night. Okay. The uh, 30-amp hookups are uh, $10 a night. Okay. And Arvin's got a blue light special on those. If you want to stay all six nights, he just charge you for five of them. Get one so, night free. There you go. <laughs> but Arvin gives you a blue light special. Yeah, Arvin's who he need to contact on those. Okay, and who, uh, you got a phone number. There. Yes, Arvin's number is 870-715-7246. Okay, all right. Uh, so, and you just get tickets at the at the gate when you get there. And, uh, and again, three-day pass is certainly a bargain. $25, say $7. If you plan on going all three days, you might as well just save the 7 bucks a ticket and go and get you one of those three-day passes. Always good to have you, Arvin. Uh, it seems like it comes around quicker and quicker. Is that because we're getting older? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure, Dennis. It probably is. We do appreciate we're, it. We're certainly doing that. <laughs> 
Arvin, uh, I mean, uh, Larry, thank you so much for uh, coming in, Larry. Uh, is it Larry Martin coming in each year and talking about the uh, uh, Northwest Arkansas Bluegrass Festival? And I think I said Arvin. I didn't mean to, but I was thinking of Arvin's Blue Bluegrass Festival. Right. There we go. But uh, Larry Martin, thank you so much for thank coming Thank you, in. Dennis. We, we appreciate it. And we appreciate I hope it. everybody gets a chance to go out to the Bluegrass Festival coming up August 18th, 19th, and 20th at Beacon Park, just north of Harrison. A uh, great time for all. It's family-oriented and some of the best talent in bluegrass music in this part of the country and all over the country, as a matter of fact. Thanks, Larry, for coming in. Thanks for joining us on Connection today. We hope we brought some information to you perhaps you didn't know about. Join us each week on Connection. KTKO Channel 8 Harrison, local television worth watching.